Hello everyone, again I'm Dr. Rizal Michael Nadalio. I'm a clinician and an academician and thank you again for inviting me to share my insights on this topic. What is mental health? Mental health is a basic human right. It is a complex construct wherein it's not just the absence of mental illnesses, but rather it's an integral part of our overall health, including our emotional, psychological, social, and cultural well-being. We could definitely say that mental health is a crucial aspect of our students' life. The way you see it, a healthy mental health helps students navigate how they feel and understand, how they think and learn, how they cope and act or interact with each other and with their circumstances. At the surface, some of the challenges and possible stressors are the number of requirements, the deadlines they have to meet, the upcoming examinations, and the heavy workload in their respective courses. However, these are just the academic part. There are also the interpersonal relationships like conflicts within their peers or with their significant someone, family dynamics, balancing their role in the family with studying or presence of any difficulties at home, even intra personal health like unhealthy study habits, unhealthy schedule and time management, or poor coping mechanisms. If you put all of this together, it can be really overwhelming to someone and it can definitely affect their mental health one way or the other. I understand how our students feel the need to be 100% most of the time to bring their best foot forward, to be constantly doing school works. These are all great as long as they don't sacrifice or put into jeopardy their mental health. I do suggest that on a daily basis before entering and after exiting their student roles, they should allot some time for themselves to mentally prepare themselves for the day or for the next day, to gather their strength back, to breathe, to connect with friends and family. Now, during the day or all throughout the day, students should learn how to listen to their own voices and recognize their own strengths. No? So when they're feeling tired, when you are feeling tired, you should take some rest. When you're feeling overwhelmed, you should take a step back, reassess, recalibrate, and then gather your strength back. When you're feeling not okay, allow yourself to feel that way because whatever you are feeling and whatever you are going through, all of them are valid. So don't just suppress them. We don't want all of these emotions to suddenly burst out of control. These are all easier said than done, especially with all of the requirements and backlogs they have to meet. However, one thing I'm an advocate of is we should study and we should work substantially rather than burning ourselves out. Coping mechanisms differ for each individual. There is no one way to cope with stress and these strategies should be tailored fit with an individual. But in general, number one is as mentioned previously, you have to listen to yourself. Life is hard. Student life is hard. You have to be a good friend to yourself to be able to take care of yourself. Number two is you have to realize that it's okay to feel certain emotions when you're feeling exhausted, feeling tired, feeling overwhelmed. These emotions are valid. What you're going through is valid. The earlier you recognize them, the better for your health. Now, the reason why I'm emphasizing this listening, recognizing, is because they say when you're feeling burned out, you have to take a step back, reassess, recalibrate, and then gather your strength back, right? So this is not wrong. But in the first place, we should not reach the burnout point. So we should not suppress our emotions and our feelings, but Rather, we should recognize them early and work through them earlier in the process. Number three, if you feel comfort with groups, go with your peers. If you feel comfort alone, have some me time. Regardless, you should be able to let out and express your emotions. Okay, But never, never suppress your feelings and emotions. Number four is you could also seek comfort and talk to your family and friends, obviously, right? And then number five is don't let go of your passions and your hobbies. I know it can be difficult to balance this outside school, outside studying, outside all of the requirements. Like, these are the qualities and the characteristics that make you, you. If you can join organization, join activities outside school, and express yourself through art, dance, social services, you should do this, right? So whatever you're passionate about, as long as you can relax and you can express your emotions and never, never suppress your emotions and feelings.
In relation to coping strategies earlier, we also have the support system which is also very crucial. First, we have the peers. These are the people who are going through the same challenges as they are going through. So we are confident that empathy will come into play because they understand each other. Second, we have the mentors. These are the people who went through the same challenges as they are currently going through. They can lend their ears and hear you out. They can eventually share their advice and tips that are practical, attainable, and realistic. Now, mentors can be the upper years or the faculty member depending on your institution. When I was in medical school, we have this culture of student-to-student -student mentoring, which means that the upper years will guide their juniors. And up to now, my mentors when I was in first year medical school are still my mentors outside the medical school or in the real world. Eventually, as a student, I too became a mentor to my juniors and now as a general practitioner and as a faculty member, I am still offering mentoring to my medical students and to the board takers as well. Next, we also have the family. This is one of the most important support system we have because whatever happens will happen and our family will always be there. Most of the time, we don't want to feel like an, addi like an additional burden to our family. They spend a lot of money and energy to our tuition and our requirements, but it takes a lot of courage for students or for us to open up to our family. The point here is, if you don't tell them what is going on, they cannot fully understand it, right? They cannot fully understand you. So how can they help you? How can they invest in the scenario if you don't help them help you, right? Yeah. And then next, we also have the school. First, the school administration or whoever is in charge should also listen to the students by means of establishing programs and open dialogues or open talks with the students. When I was a student council member, we did have some dialogues with the higher ups to give our suggestions and our comments. Now, this dialogue should be in person and not just a paper feedback or through online forms. It is best to have a dialogue because we are conversing with people and we are trying to meet somewhere. If, for example, we're going to base it on a paper feedback, what if the school cannot actually go through with the suggestions? If it's an open dialogue right there and then, the school can provide feedback on the suggestion and how this concern could be addressed. Most importantly, the students will realize that they are being listened to. Second, mentoring programs are encouraged. This is for the faculty members and the administration to guide the students, not dictate, not ordered, but to guide the students. Other than that, the mentors can provide additional support outside of their close circle so they can provide other perspectives on how to deal and look at certain scenarios. Fortunately, in the university, I am a faculty member. We do offer faculty mentoring to our students. Third, activities outside the academic world are highly encouraged and highly encouraged to be supported. This is where the school supports organization and student activities. We have to realize that yes, we are studying and yes, focus should be 100%. But that doesn't mean that we have to neglect or we should neglect other parts of our humanness. In the medical school I graduated and where I am currently a faculty member, we do have a number of organizations that would cater to different types of students like we have the Musica Medicina for the choir, the Medical Sato for the dancers, Student Council, and Sama San Beda for the student leaders and social advocates and social services, right? So all of these organizations and your own school organization are great in terms of the service they provide and the support they give with their members and most importantly they give a sense of belongingness to our students with this other than the open dialogue I mentioned earlier first students must recognize what they are going through what they are feeling again do not suppress second they should realize that they need help and they need guidance it is challenging to help someone who is not willing to be helped right third they have to be courageous it does take a lot of courage to share and rant our feelings and emotions with someone if you always go by the fear of they might not understand me they might see me as weak they won't support me all of these thoughts are valid right so However, all of these thoughts and fear will eventually eat you up. All of these thoughts are what ifs. But again, what if you try opening up with someone and communicating your thoughts and feelings with others, you will surprise yourself with what could happen. Fourth, 
is they have to be open. Your friends, family, and mentors are not here or should not be here to dictate your plans and goals. All of them will guide you. So you should be open to hear out all of the suggestions and possible advices and it's your path and you have to dictate your own path. Okay? Lastly, you have to be kind to yourself. No one would best take care of you than you. To reduce the stigma, we must educate efficiently and effectively. The easiest way to address this is to correct any misconceptions regarding mental health within the community and among our students. This can also be done through public health teaching, encouraging mental health programs, supporting these programs, and emphasizing to the students that there are programs for them that they could run to. I'd like to take this opportunity to bring this concept out because I believe this plays a key role in suppressing our emotions and feelings that would eventually lead to burnout. You might have done this before or you, you know someone or you have encountered someone who have did this before. Okay, So if you have a problem, for example, you'd rather not share and be open with others because you believe that your family and friends are going through so much already and you don't want to feel like an additional burden to them. Or if you have problems, you'll immediately and directly rant your problems to your close friends and dump your emotions to them. What this does is on the first scenario, we tend to suppress our emotions based on our assumptions. So all of this will eventually build up, eat us up inside, eventually burst out leading to burnout. On a second scenario, we tend to dump our emotions to the person who might not actually be truly ready to receive our emotions or our feelings right so one thing i'd like you to take away from this is learn how to ask and ask permission if there's something you'd like to share and you know for a fact that it is somehow heavy ask are you okay to receive my rants are you in the mental space right now to hear me out with this you are being respectful to the other person and avoiding dumping your emotions without warning also when you ask you are removing the assumption that the other person or that they are not ready to listen so just Okay? Now, we should strive to prevent full-blown eruption of burnout and mental health disorders through early recognition and early health-seeking behavior. All of us must be educated on mental health and if possible, all of us should advocate for it as well. Also, schools must be equipped and trained to handle diverse keyword is diverse mental health concerns other than students as friends it is encouraged to have support programs for our students now as educators we don't only educate our students on textbook knowledge right more importantly i believe we should strive to make an influence to their daily lives yes we should stand our ground yes we should be firm with the decisions rules and guidelines but hopefully we should never neglect and ignore our students as issues mental health concerns and mental health problems because we have to realize that these students our students are the new generation of doctors and soon enough they will be our colleagues in the field Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and thank you for inviting me to share my insights, okay? So I hope as the day goes on, you should always take care of yourself, okay? So thank you. Bye-bye.